Mrs. Painter. Welcome to my kitchen. Please like, share, and subscribe. Today we are making barbecue jam. We have our jars boiling over here. They've got about six minutes left to go. And this idea was born of moving here and not having access to rose hips because I made some really great rose hip barbecue sauce in Alaska. And my friend Kim gave me a jar of her wonderful apricot jam. And I thought, well, if I mix in some of my rib rub in this, this might be pretty good and it was really good. So today we're actually gonna make, it's basically jam with rib rub added to it. So here we go. So to get started, we have our apricots which have been combined with a quarter cup of lemon juice. I actually froze them that way. We have a cup of figs. Now you could use five cups of any fruit that you like. I think peaches, apricots, mangoes, nectarines would all be really good for this. We have two cups of our rib rub, and I will be sure to include both the recipe for the barbecue jam and for the rib rub in the description of this video. And we have seven cups of sugar and our pectin. This time we're gonna use sure gel. Now, if you're diabetic, this recipe is not for you, just use the rib rub. So to start, we're gonna go ahead and put our fruit in our pot. And I haven't used this pot this way before, but it's a bigger recipe. So a bigger pot is a great idea. And we're gonna start by just getting this hot up to a boil. And let's go ahead and put our rub in here while we're at it. That was two cups of our rack and rib rub. So this is pretty thick right now. And I, I don't want it to be too high because I don't want to risk burning it since this is a little thicker. This is a really cool way for you to make a shelf storable barbecue product that can be made easily without a pressure cooker. I know a lot of people are intimidated by pressure cookers. And I'm gonna go ahead actually and add a half cup of water to this because I think this is gonna be pretty thick when it comes to a boil. So let's do that. That's filtered water. And this looks just like barbecue sauce. There we go, that's a better texture. Let's see if I can let you see what this is looking like here. And we'll go ahead and pause while we wait for this to come up to temperature. So I went ahead and got our jars out. Our mixture is almost up to temperature here. And it didn't really take that long. We're going to go ahead and add our pectin to it, and we're going to bring this to a full boil. We're going to let it boil for a minute. Let's get that stirred in really good here. I have this just a little above medium heat. I don't want to get it too hot, but again, we want to get it up to full rolling, rolling boil. There you, go. you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. A little more work to get something this thick boiling, but we will get there. Whenever you're working with something that's really thick and you're boiling it, just be careful that it doesn't pop and burn you. I have had that happen to me before and it's not pleasant. All right, let's go ahead and add our sugar. A lot of sugar. The primary preserving agent in this is in fact the sugar. The pectin is just gonna make it stay thicker, which it doesn't look like that's gonna be much of a problem with this recipe. But um, it 
seeds loaded with apricots and figs and rib rub. Now we just need to get this up to a full rolling boil and we're gonna let it boil for a full minute. Let's go ahead and turn our water back on in our pot back there so that that's ready for us when we add our jars to it. Okay, I had no problem getting that sugar mix, mixed in. The sugar actually melts when it gets really hot. I have nine half pint jars sterilized and I have a little extra um, jar there so we can have some to test. If I have any extra, it's okay because we have family in town and who doesn't like barbecue? Getting a little bubble action on the side. We just need this to come up to a full rolling boil and then we're gonna time it for one minute. And we're not all that worried about the thickness of this. We are making jam, but because we're gonna use it as a barbecue, you could um, baste it with a brush if you had to, and you can use a knife and spread it on there. I think another thing that this might be super good on would be a panini sandwich with some brisket. I think that would be very delicious in place of mayonnaise. One thing is when you're making jams, when you get close to the temperature getting there, be careful that it doesn't um, overflow the volume of your pot. That can happen easily. Let's go ahead and turn our timer on. We have reached our full rolling boil. And I'm standing back a little bit because it is getting a little bit poppy. All right, turning the heat off. And let's go ahead and start ladling this into our jars. And I'm filling up to the bottom of my um, canning funnel. See what I'm doing. It started out really thick, but now you can see it's got the consistency that jam would normally be. For anybody that's made jam before. Probably should have had two more jars here. I didn't take into account the extra volume from the rub. All right, let's go ahead and wipe the tops of our jars with our vinegar. I like to do this because it helps make sure that the tops of the jars are clean and it improves your seal. Just 
make sure you don't have any jam on the lip of your jar because that will stop it from sealing. So I have nine jars here. I think you could have easily done 11. And that takes in the extra volume from the rib rub that we added to the jam. All right, let's get these rings on. Let's get our water turned up. Get our jars in the water. All right, I'm going to be processing this for 15 minutes. Sure Gel's directions are a little different than um, the directions on the pectin we used the last time. They say for jelly to process for five minutes, for jam to process for 10 minutes, and then because of our elevation, we're at about 2,000 feet, we're gonna add a little more time to it, five, an additional five minutes. So we're gonna actually process this for a total of 15 minutes once it starts boiling which will be pretty soon. I like to keep that water going in the background so that it stays hot. And it looks like I'm gonna have to add a little water. I can't quite fit nine of these half pint jars in there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video while we get this up to a boil. All right, our water is coming up to a boil. Let's go ahead and turn our timer on for 15 minutes. And we'll be back in 15. Okay, our jars have been processing for 15 minutes. Let's turn this heat off. Let's turn the timer off. And let's go ahead and pull this over so that we can get the jars out more easily. Lid off. It's very full, so you want to be very careful with this hot water. All right, let's use these canning tongs. If you don't have these and you want to can, this is essential. And be really careful when you do this that you don't accidentally dip your hands into the hot water. I'm sure people have done that before. It would not be pleasant. You can hear that popping. That means it's sealed. I have an old towel here on my countertop. You don't want to put anything really hot on your counter. And it also gives the jar a little bit of a cushion. You don't want to break your jars. So we have this little sample jar here that we had left over. 
Let's go ahead and take a taste of this. I'm really curious to know what it's going to taste like by itself. It's not really meant to be eaten by itself, but let's give it a try. Just curious. It's setting up really nicely. It's actually really pretty good. If you were a barbecue freak, you might put it on some toast. I think it would be fabulous on a panini sandwich. But I'm going to use mine for barbecue. Thank you so much for joining me today.